Welcome to episode number 101. Uh, today we're going to learn about African folk art and also do line art in the midst of it. So you'll be getting a, a lesson about um, African art as well as um, using some of the ELA standards for line art and line work and, and math and measurements. So what I have here, um, and of course you're always free to use what you have available, is um, watercolor paint, but you can also use oil pastels or crayons. Um, some sort of textured um, either paper or burlap or something like that because we will be um, making a, a basket to put on the top of the heads of the African women. Um, some sort of ruler or just straight edge. Um, you, I'm using um, recycled um, cereal uh, box but you can also use brown construction paper uh, or you can use paper bag and then just a plain white piece of paper and then your usual pencils, pens uh, for outlining, um, uh, paint brushes, a water bowl and scissors. I will be using pen throughout the demonstration just so you can see what I'm doing but usually I would start with the pencils and um, for the drawing portion for the children and then they can uh, outline it in pen if they like. Not all students like to outline theirs in pen. Alright, let's get started. I've cut, I'm using a 9 by 12 piece of paper and this is about uh, an 8 by 10 uh, piece of cardboard. And so again I'm using the back of a, um, a cereal box and we want to make it so that it has about a half an inch to an inch diameter all around the edges. We will at some point be attaching this to the white piece of paper, but for right now, this is just simply to make sure that we have a border on our, um, our cardboard, but we won't be attaching it yet. We'll be working on it separately. Take your pencil and draw three circles onto your cardboard or your darker, dark piece of paper. Add two lines to represent the neck onto all three of the circles. Use your straight edge and make a line that is horizontal under each of the lines representing the neck. Now take your straight edge and you're going to make what looks like rectangles except you're going to allow the line to flare a little bit at the bottom so that you have the shape of a dress on each of the figures. Create what might look like an orange slice or an oversized U on the top of the heads to represent the baskets that the women are carrying. Now you'll begin to create the, the um, traditional designs of the African dress. So up here is the designs of the neck jewelry. Then we will be doing different designs on each of the dresses. This is one way we can do it. We'll do it on both sides. At the bottom here, just to break up the pattern, you can make diagonal lines. This can be done freehand or it can be done with your straight edge. You just work all the way down can change the direction of the spirals on the other dresses. And just continue working through until you've completed the designs on all of them. Now you're going to add the arms and the legs. And they can just be a very stylized look. When we get to the arms, we want to make sure that one of the arms is reaching up towards the basket. And then just depending how much space you've left, 
um, between the three women, that's where you'll decide which arm to put above the head. And then of course make sure and give her a second arm. Now, whatever textured um, item you decided to use for the baskets, with this example that I'm doing, I've used textured paper, you would cut so that it fits approximately the size of the shapes that you've designed as the bowls. Now, again, you can use things like twine, you can use textured paper, you could even use um, paper towels if you wanted to, but more importantly, it's just about allowing that to be the, the part of the um, painting that really stands out and, and helps you notice the texture of a basket. So you'd remember that this is about basket weaving um, as part of the, as part of the uh, lesson that we did with this, um, this African art piece. Now we can begin to fill this painting with color. So the options, of course, are whatever you have on hand, whether it be markers or crayons. I'm using watercolor paints and oil pastels. What I would do first is I would go in and paint um, the black portions of this painting, which will be the face, the arms, the neck, and the feet. And this you can also use crayon if that makes it easier. You can actually do the whole thing with watercolor paint as well, but again, giving it lots of different dimension is, is the goal that I like to achieve when I'm uh, working with my uh, uh, little artists. So that's why I try to incorporate lots of uh, little pieces, you know, to help them understand that there's lots of different media for them to work with. So you just go in and you're just painting and you'll of course notice the difference and if you've worked with your students with other different uh, mediums before using a cereal box versus using a paper bag uh, versus using construction paper you'll be able to see the difference of how the um, the paint and the markers react to uh, when you use uh, different uh, types of um, medium. <music>